Hi everyone, I'm going to talk a little bit more about Wudagong. So Wudagong is a traditional training method. It has a whole lot of practices within it. Some of them are, or most of them are for training force, but it goes through a whole range of skills and methods of changing the body. I'm going to have a look today at some simple things to do with a punch and also how we can apply this kind of skill to grappling where someone's holding you or trying to lock you. So we're going to start off first of all just explaining the punch first of all. So normally you can see this is one of the punch routines we use. Of course I've mentioned before and I've demonstrated when we actually use punch um, with power for striking. It's a little bit different. So a method is to help you kind of achieve a change of body, a different uh, type of body through practice. And that's usually what we call the art side of the training. So you're changing yourself through your method. So this is how we can apply it to some different conditions, different types of conditions. I'll ask Fontaine, uh, my wife, to come and help. So, yeah, so Fontaine's going to assist me here. So what I'm going to show, first of all, is a simple thing where if your arm is grabbed, so this is just a, a typical situation where someone's holding your wrist, trying to say, take your balance or pull your balance. So you can get that kind of thing happening. One simple thing we do is just twisting. So you can see just by twisting the arm like that makes it very hard for the person to hold. So of course, if I'm way out here and I'm not really, the people are usually a lot stronger than you who attack you, that would be difficult for me. But if I come closer, I can then, I've got more leverage and I can do that. So if you look at this movement, you can see how the twist, this is part of the punch, right? So the punch, there's a twisting motion of withdrawing uh, as you withdraw the fist. So it's used like that to actually uh, uh, control somebody. So of course you can do it very sharply. So if they're holding, you can suddenly pull back. This arm would strike normally, but you can see how it's used, just the twisting action if I do it slowly. So now Fontaine's arm is, is in a bad position. If I just do that, it's already good enough to make them lose balance. So that's how that type of movement's used. When it's when we practice, you'll notice we always use the waist. So when people train the waist, they don't always coordinate. So this is I'm turning my waist, but nothing is happening, right? So there's there's no there's a disconnect between my my arm and the waist. What you've got to practice is that the turning coordinates, so it's in sync with the arm. That's really important. And then, of course, when you're better at it, it's very quick. It's even harder for people to hold. If they do hold, as you saw before, you can take their balance. And this would be, of course, striking. So there's all these sorts of different situations, uh, ways of applying your, your methods, your training. If your both hands are held, maybe Fontaine can demonstrate this one, your arms do the same thing. You, you use both arms here and you push from your back leg. So you can see it's very strong, very powerful. So I'm holding again, so Fontaine. I also um, mentioned, so we always work on shoulders relax. So relaxation is a major principle in our training. So you work, if I lift up the shoulders, then it doesn't Can't work. Do it. So I have to relax into the legs, then yeah. push. You can see the difference. Yeah. yeah, so the body, you can see that body, Fontaine does that again. This is part of dragon body. If you do it side on, maybe they can see here yeah, like that. So the back, you just hold the posture. The back is quite rounded. Yeah, the shoulder is down, the spine is straight. You yeah, so you've got to keep the shoulder down. This allows the force, my force, to be channeled down to her legs. So when she pushes, she's, she's really pushing from the legs. The structure here gives her plenty of uh, upper body support, so she's not actually coll collapsing. She's like a, a ball, a ball shape. So the ball shape gives you kind of universal strength. You know, your strength's pretty much everywhere in, in the upper body. But the shoulder has to relax. Once you do this, you break that structure. So structure is important. It's not everything in a sense that when you're training, your body will naturally adjust. So you don't walk around with, look at me, I'm holding my structure. You have to, it has to be natural. So that's a, a, a part of the process, training process. Okay, so we looked at the, the idea here of the punch. The um, turning the waist, again, is really important. So 
for example, if Fontaine's just say pushing, pushing my shoulder, right, I can turn to neutralize her force. If I don't, and she's pushing hard, suddenly it's going to create some problems for me, especially if it's a type of force like that. I have to adjust very quickly. Okay, so I can neutralize her, her force or redirect her force. So why this is another reason why we turn the weight. So if you look at this type of movement, this is ward off. So ward off is a spring kind of loaded position. So it's similar to what Fontaine was doing before with her arms and I held her, but this is a more like in a protective position, but it's trained like this to help you get the structure. So it's quite strong, quite balanced. But if the force is really great pushing against me, I have to change me. I have to be able to roll back. When I roll back, I don't want to, if she pushes again, I don't want to lift up my, my body because that creates a problem. She can throw me off balance. I could do it if I, you know, if she does push and I'm, I control her arm, that's fine. I can do that. I kind of make her go up. But ideally, if she's pushing strong against me, I need to turn. So the turning, you can see the body twist like that. So it's not not flat anymore. And the arm is here. The other, what, the other arm that I'm, I'm uh, using is this one to control her elbow. Because if I don't control the elbow, properly, she could come in and strike me with the elbow like that, which hurts. So I have to protect. So in case that happens, I don't give her the opportunity. Okay, she could use a shoulder, which means then I have to suddenly, if I do it, which I wouldn't do because it's nasty, but I would twist her back that way and throw back. So there's, there are always counter measures and ways of doing things. But generally, you want to protect, you can see, you don't want to give people the opportunity, so it's really important. So ward off means that you you give yourself good protection. So if Fontaine, if I've got like an on guard, you can see like in uh, boxing or something, if she strikes my arm strong, right, like that, okay, so do it sharp, and, yeah. So the, <laughs> the idea is that your ward off can deal with it, but of course you wouldn't go against it. If it's really strong, I need to adjust to her force. But what I wouldn't want to do is completely drop down because then I'm, I'm exposing my head. But I could do this if she's suddenly strong and I can change. That's fine. I can change to, to strike. But generally speaking, okay, this is what we talked about ward off is this kind of protection. Yeah, you know, like a spring. Can you see? It's enough to keep you at bay and absorb your pressure. If I'm too relaxed, that becomes a weakness. If I'm too tense, like that, that becomes a weakness. See, they draw you forward. So if you hit the right pressure, whatever they do, whichever way they go, you can adjust. You see, you can adjust. So it gives you this, if you think of it, we always talk about the yin and yang in training. So yin and yang is about balance. So it's really the hard and soft together. That's a feature of this type of training. Okay, so that's about protection. That's about when people grab. Another way of using this is like the punch. You'll see the punch has this force that goes back. So when I punch, one arm goes back. So it can, you can see it here. Someone's locking your arm. This force is like that. So what happens is she's locking my arm, but I'm punching forward with this arm to give myself an opposite force. I don't have to, but it's useful. Because whenever you move, you really want to involve or engage both arms. So even though, let's say this arm, let me show that way, this arm is here, it's good to have this arm somewhere nearby as a, as a kind of countermeasure, counterbalance. The body also acts as a counterforce, so even the shape of the body, it's not like this, it's, yeah, there's, there's a certain counterforce there. So, and the legs as well. So you've got the arms, you've got the legs, you've got the spine, you've got the waist. And you've also got like the head, which is part of the spine, but all of those parts have to be play a role in whatever happens. You're not just sort of letting the body kind of, you know, you dominate one side, forget the other side. So the yin and yang. So yin and yang also means it's dynamic. It's changing all the time. So you never, you can't say, oh, this is the best posture. Everything has a weakness. You know, you always have to adjust. That's, that's the idea. You have to be able to change with whatever's happening. And that's where things like when you learn push hands, you're, you're contacting your partner, 
but you're very much alive. You're very much feeling what they're doing. You're not just relying on, um, like, oh, I've got this pattern. I've got to use a pattern. You, you never know. You never know what they're going to do. So you're, the idea is you you have sensitivity, you have ward off, and you have a, you have the ability to change. <laughs> Gotta be careful. <laughs> oh, <laughs> she wins all the time. Okay, so this is a little bit of an insight into some of the things we do. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for attending.